Hello, this is Deborah Johnson, and today's video is on creating a podcast. Where to begin? Podcasting is a great way to build authority and provide your listeners with valuable and entertaining content. It can also help you build your audience and your platform. There is much interest in starting a podcast, but how do you begin? And what tools do you need to begin? That's what we'll cover briefly here in this video. And I cover more of this in some of my courses, such as A New Way of Doing Business. But I'm going to pull back the curtain on my method here, which is definitely not the only method. But the information I share here will help you at least start on your podcast production journey. As you begin, you will discover what will work best for you. First of all, it's good to have a strong reason why you want to do a podcast. It can be just for fun. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you have a strong reason for starting a podcast, there's a better chance of you continuing to do your podcast. And that's what I'd love to see happen for you. Many podcasts start strong, but peter out after 11 or 12 episodes after realizing there is a bit of work involved. So come up with your best reason that will still be a good reason after a few months. Ideally, the subject of your podcast should relate to your audience or your clients with an area of interest or business that you are in. It should also be interesting to you. Have a little fun with this. A podcast can be as long or as short as you wish, but the most popular episodes are between 25 and 27 minutes long. This is perfect for many commuters and attention spans. As long as you're consistent, you can schedule them weekly, bi-weekly, or even monthly. I put out the Women at Halftime podcast weekly, and I can add a bonus episode at any time between regularly scheduled episodes. To record your podcast episode, you can start simply with a USB microphone and computer. It's that easy. Invest in a good microphone. Some people even record on their phone, but I don't recommend that as a regular pattern. A good mic will pay off. There is much too much competition to put material out that has scratchy or echoey sound. For a USB mic, I personally like the Yeti Blue, which easily works on a PC or Mac computer. But there are many other options. Do your research and look at the reviews. For episodes I record just myself or with my husband in my home office studio, I use a professional microphone with my recording equipment to export wave sound files. But this is not necessary. If doing it this way, you will need software to record on. I personally use Digital Performer but there's open source software available such as Audacity or GarageBand, again, depending on whether you are on a Mac or PC. Both will work fine for you. For interviews, I record on the Zoom video platform and export the MP3 files. You can also use the video footage from those Zoom recordings if you want to release video interviews, repurposing your podcasts on YouTube, Vimeo, or another platform. What I do is simply attach the sound file to a meme I create for that week's title and put that on YouTube to create other search options for my podcast episodes. If you are hiring a producer, your main job is just to record. They can edit for you, take out long pauses, insert commercials, and even add your intro and your outro. Personally, I like the freedom of doing this myself as it has given me the freedom to pivot a bit in my messaging for some of the episodes when facing a pandemic as coronavirus or when marketing a new program, such as my music membership or other online courses. However, I have the recording background and editing skills to be able to do this. This is not for everyone. You can edit on a program such as GarageBand and other software, but be prepared to experiment and spend some time learning. You can do this, but be patient and be persistent. If you edit your own episodes, I strongly suggest also using a program called Audacity for mastering. It will be one of your best friends for sound levels. 
Mastering evens out the sound where all the voices come through at the same volume so you can hear the episode clearly. This is especially important on interviews where one person may speak softer than the other. You don't want your listeners straining to hear parts of your episode. They will be more likely than to just turn you off. I have put some of those software links in the notes below. You will need artwork. Your main cover art should be 1400 by 1400 pixels. Some programs also ask for a second version for Facebook and other platforms. Those programs will give you that information. For hosting, there are different companies that will do this for you and will release each episode's RSS feed on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and others. I personally use Libsyn and I'm very happy with it. I also put that link below. Plan ahead and come up with a good list of titles and subjects for your show episodes. If you plan ahead, you can coordinate your podcast with your blog articles and you can plan on repurposing the episodes on YouTube. I usually batch record, which means I do a number of episodes at one time. I can then schedule them so they will be released automatically on the date and time I specify. I love automation as it frees me up and is one more area where I am in control of my business and it doesn't control me. Create your own system and hire out the help that you need. Remember, there are places that will create your artwork and even your intro outro of your episodes. I actually hired out the intro to my podcast on Fiverr. I was very specific with what I wanted and I love the outcome. I made sure there was a guarantee that I had complete worldwide commercial permission to use all music and video files with no copyright infringement. I love recording podcast episodes. I personally record and appear solo on two shows a month. Then I record one along with my husband, Greg, in my home office with my recording equipment. I then do one interview, usually on Zoom, using my USB microphone. This scheduling format works really well for me and gives me the chance to also promote those individuals and businesses I interview. I create a separate meme for every episode and promotional text to release on social media weekly. I have an assistant who helps me with this. I hope this has helped you at least begin and wish you all the success in your podcast endeavors. You can do this. You just have to start with a plan and a process. Make it simple and make it work. This is Deborah Johnson, and I'd love you to listen and subscribe to my Women at Halftime podcast. And I'd really appreciate if you write me a review if you like it. And I hope you do. Bye for now.